Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Today we are bringing you a brand new PK Orcus deck profile. This particular flavour of Orcus seems to be the one that people are enjoying the most. Of course you can go for options such as BA and things like that. That might be a little bit closer to my own heart, but you get the idea. Again, I really like this variant, hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. This should just give you some ideas of how you could play the deck, things you could try out. Again, I would definitely recommend doing that before you go out and pick up any cards. On that note, if you are looking to pick up any cards after this video, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link down in the description if you want to get a discount on their eBay store, courtesy of yours truly. As a final note before we go on, if you haven't subscribed already, you should definitely consider doing so. I need to rope you in before you realise this is hot fucking garbage and you decide to walk away from the video at that point. And of course, if this is not your first time on the channel, you may need to seek some fucking help. But that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. As a quick note before we get started, I do want to apologise if you can hear a whirring sound in the background. I have really fucking loud fans on my laptop, so apologies about that. Hopefully though we can clip some of that out with the audio editing. But anyway, let's get stuck into the profile, shall we? So we start off with a single copy of Gizmek Orochi. This card will just allow you to keep going. It's fucking insane. This card's absolutely broken. Uh, I think it's a really important part, and I don't think that you should omit it from your list. I think when, when you play with it, you'll see how important this is. It can enable you to stay alive, especially if you're in the death. The amount of games that you'll snatch as well, where this is in your graveyard, your opponent sets up without realizing it, and then they run right into it and really struggle to deal with it. And after that, you can start breaking apart their board and pushing for additional damage. I think most of the Orcus lineup as a whole, and that includes the wand and all that goodness is pretty self-explanatory and kind of standard uh, two copies of wild wand if you dump one you can summon another from your hand all that kind of good stuff a lot of people don't realize that interaction triple copies of orcus nightmare for your standard orcus plays again i'm not going to go through those on the video here if you are looking for those look out there there are tons of combos i'd recommend checking out yugi joe's videos on these if you want to get some ideas of how to do these combos and basic bits i may even pop a little link on the screen if he's lucky to allow you to go over there and check them out we have triple copies of Gears through the Orcus Mech Knight. Again, really important starter card. We have two copies of Symbol Skeleton. Sorry, three copies of Symbol Skeleton. Pretty standard as you would. Obviously, there's no harp, so we can't include that. We have a single copy of Brass Bombard. Not everyone likes this, but I like it for unclogging your hand and getting your plays going again. We have the Brothers of Destruction here, Armageddon Knight, Dark Grefer. They're pretty self-explanatory. Those two Dark Warriors are just absolutely insane. And speaking of Dark Warriors, this is where we get into our Phantom Knight package. This whole Phantom Knight package is really sort of standard. You can run it a little bit bigger if you want to. Some people like to double up on boots and that kind of thing. I think this is absolutely fine as it is. You really just wanted to go into Rusty and then get into your fog, fog Blades as quickly as possible, which is going to allow you to set up that kind of silly going first board you can also go down the vfd route if that's something that you want to this is how i played it in previous iterations uh, i don't want to include it in this one i just didn't feel that it was necessary but again it's an option that you can go down for an instant win button being able to use that rank up and just switching off your opponent for, with vfd something that you could definitely consider doing we've got a small danger package in here uh, these two being of appropriate levels being threes is kind of handy especially if you go on to play like ba variants and that kind of thing for the most part though they're just darks that are free summons uh, and i think that they're absolutely fine as is uh, so just one of each of the broken ones seems good to me you can include mothman and chupacabra if you want other extenders but i think that it's absolutely fine just to get an extra body on board and go down your orcus plays from there as for hand traps, we're running a relatively minimal amount. We're running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Best hand trap of basically every format. Certainly the most diverse by any stretch of the imagination. I think that you have to include it. Uh, Gamma and Driver are just really strong at the moment and continue to be really strong at the moment. A few people are starting to drop off from using these. I think that they're really good options though to consider using. Uh, again, a lot of the time you're going to side these out after your first game. But I think having them in for your turn one is kind of important. We have two copies of Orchestrated Return. Uh, again, I think two is perfectly fine. Three is way too cloggy. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. It gives you another search option as well, so something to consider. Uh, I, I do like it, though. Being able to dig a little bit deeper, get stuff into the graveyard, seems pretty good to me. We have one copy of Babel in here. One is all you need, as you very well know. Unless you're really unfortunate, your opponent like Cosmic Cyclones or something, then you're fucked. But, you know, for the most part, it's relatively all right. Again, you can run a second if you really wanted to, but you really don't want to see this in your hand. 
Running two copies of Droplet, so I wanted to keep this a little bit more trim. We do also have Impermanence and other ways of negating opponent's effects. So I think that the two is absolutely fine, although you could up it to three if you have the option to do so. Something to consider. I think though the two is absolutely fine. We have a single copy of Call by the Grave. It's still an incredibly important power spell in the game. I think that people need to really start treating this like they treat Foolish Burial, like they treat Monster Reborn, all that kind of stuff. Kind of one-offs that you really should be playing. Almost staples, if you will, in the vast majority of decks. Speaking of power one obviously we've got one copy of Foolish Barrel, you already know what this does. A single copy of Monster Reborn, same sort of thing. A copy of Rotor, we run Dark Warriors, so you want to be able to search them. Double Fog Blade is perfectly fine, you can go for three, again I don't feel it's necessary. We have a single copy of Shade Brigandine, uh, this is just for your Phantom Knight plays, uh, you already know again. If you've played any of these iterations of the deck, you already know what this does. If you're not really sure though, again, go out and check out those combo tutorials, they'll give you an idea exactly of what you can do with this card. We have a single copy of Crescendo. Crescendo, again, a really important piece to get this out onto the field turn one. You want to be able to set up in the gates so your opponent can't play through your board and then push for big damage later on. And we have triple copies of Impermanence. This is good because going first, it doesn't matter. You can just set it. You can switch off your opponent's back row, switch off their monsters. Or, of course, if you're going second, it's a way to the gate, an important piece to allow you to go about your plays in your opponent's turn. As always with these deck profiles, we are omitting the side deck. There's no point putting it in here because it really depends on what you're playing against as to what you would play in your side. So if you're playing at locals and you know everyone plays absolutely fucking garbage decks, you'll need to play for Rogue. If you know you're against all meta decks, then of course you have to build in kind. So with that in mind, we are skipping straight over to the extra deck. So we're running a single copy of Omega because we, uh, you know, we can make it. Not that we really will, but it gives you an option, certainly. Uh, we have two copies of Dingir, so I think the two is absolutely fine. Some people like to go up to the three. I really don't think it's necessary. Uh, Galate is kind of a weird one. I have considered only playing this at two copies, but I think that the third does occasionally come up. You could omit this for something else, again, if you really wanted to, but I think that the three copies is nice. Just have that little bit more of a grind game, which can sometimes come into play a lot, particularly with the decks that are out in the meta at the moment. We have a single copy of Long Gear Sue. This is one that, again, some people are cutting from their decks. I think it's a really nice option to have in there. And I think as a one-off, it's perfectly fine. We have Link Rebo, Barricade, Board Blocker. These are just to get stuff into the graveyard to link off really shitty pieces that you don't need on the board with like Link Rebo. Uh, we've got IP Mascarena to allow you to go into some of your interrupts. You've got multiple options here. So we've got Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and we can skip straight over to Zeroboros. These are cards that you can set up in your opponent's turn that can actually come in really really handy uh, as a really good method of interrupting this is what the deck does really well we want to be able to interrupt our opponent as much as possible stop them from establishing the boards they want to and then push for game afterwards Zeroboros, unicorn phoenix all allow us to do that as well as being really good toolbox cards we have a single copy of rusty bardish again it's at one for a reason but it, you know one is all you would really need anyway uh, this card's really insane it gets all of those plays going again if you go and watch combo tutorials out there they'll teach you the very basics that you need to know of these if the demand is there i can go ahead and do those but there are some really good resources again particularly if you go out and look what's out there already and our final card here is Boral Sword Dragon. Some people may prefer Access Code Talker. If you've got access to it, that is something you could consider. The majority of the links we are running here is dark, although you could still go for it because you're going to get one or two pops on board. Let's keep that in mind. But Boral Sword, again, just has its advantages of its own. So that's why I've included it here. But again, Access Code is a perfectly good replacement. In fact, in many respects, a much better one. And that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully it's given you some ideas of how you could play the deck yourself, a list to go away with and try out and see how you get on. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.